air will do and welcome to this overview of ProTake. What is ProTake? Think along the same sort of lines as Filmic Pro. Is it on par with Filmic Pro? I don't know. You decide. Let's get right in and let's have a look. I'm going to set myself off the screen so I'm not a distraction and let's speak about ProTake. So here we are right away in the ProTake um, application. I'm using this just for this demonstration purposes on my iPad. I wouldn't normally use it on my iPad. I would use it on my phone. Um, I say I wouldn't normally use it on my iPad. I would never use it on my iPad. I would only use it on my phone. And I have used it a couple of times to record a few things and just to mess about with this. And I must say as well, this is not a um, sponsored video. Um, and you will see as we go through, I've not got the pro features. So let's just have a look around at the screen as we're seeing now. How does this um, differ from the native iPhone recording app? So it offers you a lot more functionality, either in the auto mode as we're in now or in the pro mode. As you can see at the bottom right hand corner, we've got, let's just start with our record button right away. We've got our record button. Um, and then to the left of it, we've got our auto or our pro function button. I'm gonna press that in a minute and I'll show you what that does. As we move along, we've got our grid and then our time and then our um, battery percentage of the device that we're using um, and then the, the free space on the device that we're using and then any sort of mic inputs as well. Um, let's go back over to this grid for a moment. So I think as we go through them, we can then go through the, um, the little bits that are on the screen. So if I go over here onto the, onto the grid, what this allows me to do is essentially change the, as change the aspect ratio. Really simple, um, don't really need to go through that. The aspect ratio, you know what that is. Um, and then we have this safe area um, and the safe area just highlights that um, you know, if you wanted to cut things down, if you wanted to frame your picture quite nicely, you could use the safe area in which to record through. So let's say for instance, we chose 85%. You can see this little square around the um, outside of the camera image um, that shows 85%. I've just got a, um, a lens at the front of the camera. So um, just to give you something else to look at other than a, um, a white desk. So um, at 100%, you're using 100% of the areas. And then we've got this others. Um, again, this is just grids, so we can use horizon. And what's quite nice about this, it sort of keeps you, if you tilt and move, it keeps you um, keeps you sort of on the horizon, shall we say. So it keeps the device or the camera as you're viewing it, it gives you an indication of the um, of whether you're level or not. And then we've got crosshair. So you just have a little crosshair pop up in the middle of the screen and it just gives you like a center point of the picture, I suppose, um, with the crosshairs. And then we've got the third. So anybody that doesn't know the rule of thirds with the grid, um, so that's just the grid of the rule of thirds, okay? And then it just obviously shows you that they are on by um, annotating a line underneath it. So if I click them again, it takes the line off them and we get rid of that. So that's the, um, that's the, that's the grid mode in the bottom right-hand corner. Then we have the sort of time. We just spoke about that when you press and record, the time will start to go up. Um, let's, let's look at the bottom first. First, we have the rotation, so it'll change the uh, um, rotation of the screen, so it change it, or the rotation of the camera, so it change it from portrait to landscape. Good if you want to um, use it for Insta and stuff like that. And then we have sort of a clean screen or a clear screen, so it just gets, removes anything. And this, what this is really good for is if you wanted to use it for a webcam, um, you know, if you had a virtual webcam function in whatever app you were using, you could use a clear, clear screen and then they wouldn't see any of the overlay pieces and the tools, um, tools overlay on the screen. And then we can zoom in, zoom out. So it just turns the two times display on or off. And then the, um, the display brightness, you can adjust the display brightness using um, this button here. So this just changes it to max and then turn it back off, changes it to normal. You can also do that by clicking on the screen and then dragging up and down um, like that, so that'll just change the exposure on the um, on the on the camera as well. And you can do the same. I'm sure you know in the native app, the native iPhone app, you can do the same. Um, so let's look at top left-hand corner. So we've gone round top left-hand corner. 
we've got the resolution and we can just tap the rev resolution up there and we can change it from 4K to 1080p to 720p and also change the megabytes per second. And then we've got the frames per second. Um, this is where we can turn our time lapse on or off as well as you can see here. Um, 30, 25, 24 or six frames per second. And you just change that um, as you see fit. Simple as that. And then over here, we've got this sort of, you just click this and it's like a beauty enhancement. And it says on the current device, if you'd like to use the beauty feature, please choose resolution of frame rate up to 1080p, 30 frames per second or 720p. So you can't do it at 4K. And that's just like, it just smooths your face out and all of that rubbish. Personally, would never use that. So, um, but I know that some people out there might. And then we've got this little color wheel up here, this little pro take. Um, logo at the top and what you can actually do is is download pro take um, LUTs or looks as they call them and that's quite simple I'm just gonna click download and we can um, we can download them um, really easy um, but because I've not got the pro option um, I have a lot of them grayed out or locked out and I suppose the only one that I would be interested in is this let me just get rid of that is log C here um, and then it tells you if you click one of the many of the locks, it tells you what the membership, um, what the membership will cost in order to unlock all of these features. So, so that's the looks. Um, and then over here we've got play, the play, the play button, and that's just going to play back anything that you've got. Then I suppose what's here, which is important, is the settings. Again, it tells you about the yearly cost. Um, and then going across the top, obviously the data, the presets, and the accessories will open up if you subscribe to this um, and it just tells you what what the what each one gives you the pro the cinematic looks the data management camera presets and accessories if you go to the record here all we've got it's really simple record beeper on or off so it just beeps when you press record record flash on or off um, frame rate drop notice if you should drop any frames it'll give you a warning um, vertical video you can turn it on and off from there and then the stabilization I suppose what's really before I go into that stabilization let me talk about something else high dynamic range image masking bottom left hand side on or off or auto um, I would always suggest that you have it on auto and then we have save to in app camera roll or both I would just select that you su suggest that you save it to your camera roll of your um, of your iPhone device so then or your mobile device so then you can just adjust it or get rid of it from there or edit it from there so here this is where I think that um, the pro take is a little doesn't quite match up to filmic pro so at the moment we've got stabilization you can choose the cinematic or extreme stabilization now you just got to remember with this comes latency with latency or high latency generally comes lag so if I now move the camera around I will have a slight delay I'm gonna tell you I'm moving the camera now one two three and I've stopped one two so you've got this slight lag of me moving the camera and the camera actually moving. And you have to really try it for yourself. There's no way I can really, I'm moving the camera backwards and forwards now, um, and you are getting that sort of a split second afterwards. So there's no real way of demonstrating that for you. So just be aware of that, is if you have the stabilization um, up to extreme, then um, with that comes that, um, comes that lag High latency um, brings lag. So now let's go to the um, to the important part, which is the changing. Oh, sorry, I forgot about the the lens. We can go with the um, with the zoom here, so we can just click the lens, and we get that nice little zoom function there um, on the right hand side. So let me um, obviously, and then you get the selfie camera at the top, top right hand corner as well. Let's look at this, change this auto to pro, and then the screen sort of comes alive a little bit more and gives you much more feedback. Um, so as you can see down the bottom right hand side, I can't record anything in pro because I've not got the pro function. But what I can do is show you the function functionality. Here, this is quite interesting. Next to the pro, we've got our always on assistance, and it's just on auto. So you have focus, focus peaking, false color, and zebra. So think of focus peaking as, um, as your edges, as your sharp edges. It will highlight anything on your sharp edges. So I'm gonna show you this more functionality, really. I'm gonna show you a more demonstration with the zebra. So if you've ever used, false color is just opposite to true color. 
and then zebra if you've ever had those little diagonal lines on the screen when you've been recording something it's likely that you've got zebra turned on so if i turn that zebra on now you can see in blue is generally where my camera is underexposed and then in red over here over this bit here is where it's overexposed so that's what Zebra does for you. If you ever see this on any, any other sort of applications, what it's doing is telling you in the blue areas here for this app specifically, is that, that that's underexposed. It's probably gonna be a little bit dark and you're gonna lose detail in there. And then over here on the right hand side, it's showing that that's overexposed. I wonder what happens if I put a light on it. Give me one second. So if now if I bring, all I'm doing is bringing this light in, look, this little handheld light, if I bring that into the picture, and, and that's gonna show you that all that area there is, is also overexposed. So underexposed and overexposed. And Zebra is a really good, um, just a really good tool um, for you to be aware of um, when sort of filmmaking, it's really good. So Zebra's that, false color you can see here is that it's not true tone, it's greens and, and blues, not the, um, or reds, green, blues, so it's opposite to true tone. And then focus peaking, it just um, highlights any of you, your real sort of sharp areas here. Um, and that's what that does. So if you have it on auto, it's just a good place to be, bro. I would suggest that if you're gonna use any of them, um, if you're not a professional, video maker then just use the the zebra and that will um, that will really help you out and then on as we move along again we've got the time um or the grids again um, grids do the same thing and then we've got the time um code and then we can turn the light on and off the little um the little um, lightning bar there battery and the free space again the um the microphone levels and here we've just got our um, our waveforms so if I move around, you'll see the RGB waveforms and just different types of waveforms. Um, and that's, again, if you know what you're doing with um, photography, videography, especially, should I say, then that's there. And then here you've got your exposure levels, the exposure wheel. And again, look, so this zebra is coming in because we're underexposing and then we're overexposing. So the red comes in um, and then we can have like um, auto exposure here, turn it on or turn it off. Moving up again, 4K, 30 frames, um, and then we've got ISO, we've got white balance, and then the type of lens that we're using. So if we click lens, it will just tell us we can use the selfie, the wide, or the ultra wide. So this is the sort of views that we get with the ultra wide, and then obviously you know the selfie mode. And then over here we've got the um, zoom and focus wheels as well. Um, and let's just go back to autofocus. So. It take it back to A and it auto focus. So unless you're sort of stable on a tripod with anything, I would generally keep that on auto focus. So that in a nutshell is ProTake. Great app, really, really great app for free. You know, if you're not using it in the pro mode, you're using it in the auto mode, which is ample enough. You still have enough tools there to do what you want to do. It's a, um, it's a great little app for nothing. So um, my sort of really quick overview of the tools helps you out should you use ProTake. Thanks a lot for taking the time to watch. Go and download ProTake and give it a shot today. Take care, see you all soon.